Zero Accounting Software 2023. Invoice selling inventory created from a spend money form with assigned expenses to customer. Get ready because it's time to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom zero homepage going into the new company file we set up in a prior presentation that being get great guitars we're going to duplicate some tabs to put our financial statement reports in like we do every time right click in the tab up top to duplicate it then we're going to right click on that duplicated tab to duplicate it again we'll go back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down take a look at the balance sheet report and then we're going to tab to the right accounting drop down and this time the income statement report let's go back to the middle tab and change the date range by hitting the date range drop down we're looking to the customize the report bringing it on up to 2023 the end of december and then make it up to date update in the report the income statement the date range looks good we're looking at 2023 so we'll go back to the first tab and let's jump on over to our flowchart this is a quickbooks desktop flowchart but we're just looking at it to see the flow and the cycles involved here as we trace the inventory we are imagining in this case that we purchased we had we can imagine a client came into our shop and said i want these particular types of guitars in our guitar shop we said well we don't have those in stock we don't have the color you want or whatever but we can order it for you from our vendor so then we went and made a custom order for the vendor for this particular customer so that we can get the guitars that they want and turn around and sell them to them so we made a purchase order in the past and then when the guitars came in we we imagine the guitars came in with a bill connected to the box of guitars and we could have at that point entered the bill into the system the physical bill we could have entered into our bill in zero which would have increased the accounts payable but instead of doing that we just paid it at that point in time with basically a check type form a money out form as we did that as we wrote basically a check type of form paying for the inventory we assigned these couple items as like a billable type of expense something that i want to pull into the invoice now this is a tricky this is where it gets a little bit messy because oftentimes when we think about that billable kind of functionality we're not thinking about it with inventory oftentimes but rather with other things like gas and stuff like that that we want to pull on over into the invoice so because we're using inventory and items are related to inventories we have to be careful when we now turn around and go to the sales side of things to pull that inventory item into our invoice and now that we're gonna we're gonna actually sell those guitars that we purchased for the customer so to see this let's hit the let's go to the zero let's go to the tab to the right i'm gonna right click on this tab and duplicate it again and i would like to run another report for the billable items so I'm going to hit the uh, accounting drop down and go into reports. And then we're going to type in up top billable, billable expenses. So we're going to go into that report and we want to see them for 2023. That should be good uh, on the date. So we have these three items. So we've got Eric Music and Music Stuff Store, which have these uh, billable items that are connected to them. So when I make an invoice for these items, it should give me a reference to pull in these to the invoice. Now, the way we created these, if I drill down on this item and just take a look at it, we've got a spend money type of form, a spend money form. And if I go up top and say options up top and I want to 
uh, edit the transaction just to take a look at it in its edited form. We then assigned some of these items uh, assigned to a, a customer. So we assigned some of these items to a customer this way and that's how we created, I'm going back, these or these billable settings when usually we just have an expense form and we don't have actually inventory items. In this case, we assigned these inventory items. So now when I pull it into the, the invoice, I should get a reference trying to pull these two in, but it might try to pull them in at cost as opposed to try to pull them in at the sales price. And that's where this thing, you have to be quite careful when you're using this tool. So, and we'll, we'll touch on this tool again when we see it for other kind of billable things, uh, possibly for like gasoline or other expenses that you have that you want to pull into an invoice to charge a client for. So let's go back to the first tab and I'm going to hit the drop down and say, let's say we're going to make an invoice, another invoice. And this is going to be for Eric music. We'll say Eric music tabbing over and notice what popped up. These two billable expenses can be added. So that pop-up comes in because it's connected as we saw in this report up top. I'm gonna change the date and let's bring the date back on down to Jan uh, 23, let's say Jan 23. And I'll say the due date is gonna be uh, a month later on uh, Feb 23 about, and then we'll say it's an invoice uh, standard. Okay. 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 And then let's take in, let's pull in this billable stuff. So here's the two items. I can select one at a time if I wanted to just pull in one of them, but I'm going to pull them both in. So I'm going to select them both. So add as one item or add items. So I, I don't want to combine them together typically. So I'm going to add them as two line items. I would like them to show up as two line items down here. I'm going to add them. And, uh, so there we have it. Now notice that everything looks basically normal here because you have the items that are populated as we pulled in these expenses. Remember that if you did this with something that didn't have items like inventory items, meaning you paid for just gasoline and you charged it to automobile expense, and then you wanted to pull those into the invoice, then, then you wouldn't really have the items that would be pulling up. It would be just pulling in that, that expense item. So, so these items look like they're doing the right thing, but it's still pulling in the cost. It didn't switch it over to the sales price. So it connected them, but it doesn't have the right price amount on it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna say, okay, everything looks good. I'm gonna have to adjust this by saying, this is gonna be the E P S H. If I do E P S H here, I can see that it should actually be $400. And I'm gonna change that up top to $400. So you can see it's not like a perfect system. So you ha you'd have to be very careful if you're going to, and then this is an ELP, an ELP. And I, I can see that that is $500 on, on the sales price. So the ELP is 500. And then I'm going to delete this transaction here. It also didn't pull in the sales tax. So I'm going to make them both taxable. Uh, tax, tax on the sales and then tax on the sales. So, uh, so, so you can see, you can kind of do that with the inventory and it pulls it in, but it's not a perfect type of system. So you want to be kind of careful with those, uh, billable items and we'll take a look. There's other kind of issues with it when you use the billable items for other things like, like other expenses that you're paying for to pull them into an invoice that we'll talk about in future presentations. But we want to pro point out some of the pros and cons of the tool. Okay, so now what's going to happen when we record this? Well, it's an invoice. So it's going to increase accounts receivable for the full 30,450. And then the other side is going to go to the revenue account. Hopefully it's going to properly assign it to the revenue account because we're, we still have the items that pulled over. So that should give it the indication of where it should go, but that's only for the 4,000 and the 25,000, not including the sales tax, 1,450. The sales tax should be pulling into the, to the liability account of the taxes payable and inventory should be going down. Hopefully it can still track the inventory properly for the amount that was there before, because that was the cost 
that was pulled in from when we paid for the inventory. And because we're using the item, it should be able to decrease the inventory by the cost amounts. And then the other side should go to the cost of goods sold, the expense related to us selling the inventory, the net impact on net income should be the sales amount minus the cost of goods sold. And we should have the sub ledger for accounts receivable impacted because it's gonna be going for Eric Music uh, is gonna have the accounts receivable and the inventory sub ledger tracking by units should also be impacted by this as well and the billable report should go back down because we pulled these billable items uh, in and have used them now. So let's go ahead and approve it and see if that is indeed what happened. So we'll save and approve uh, complete account field. Uh, it's not, and, and notice it didn't even pull in the account field even though I had the item here. So that's interesting. So it's gonna, but in any case, it's gonna go to the sales. We're gonna go to sales and sales so hopefully it's still pulled in the inventory tracking properly and uh the cost to get sold and and so and so on so we'll check it out and so we'll say save it and it's good to go balance sheet and update it and let's check out what happened here if i go into the accounts receivable and drill down to the source documents or the general ledger report type thing there it is here's our receivables for the full thirty thousand uh four fifty and so that's for the full amount including the sales tax back to the balance sheet going to the income statement updating the income statement we should have the sales in here but only for the amount we charged not including the sales tax so we have these two line items for that uh eric music that pulled in i think those look correct they went to the proper sales account so that is good going back the other side back to the balance sheet should be in a liability account sales tax liability because we're going to have to pay that that's our basically like a our usage type of tax for the eric music one so i think that uh is correct i think uh yeah and then we're going to go back on over and then check out the inventory here's where we want to we're uh, we want to make sure this is pulling in properly. The inventory. Going into the inventory report. And scrolling on down. And we're going to see we have the inventory that's pulling in for these two amounts. Which are the cost, you'll recall. And not actually the, the amount on the sales price. That 20000 for example, if I drill down on the source document. We charged 25000 That's the cost. So it looks like it did that properly. So that looks good. Going back and back, going to the income statement, updating the income statement. We should see the other side in cost of goods sold. Cost of the goods sold. That one has to think, cost of goods sold. So there's those two. They look correct. The impact on the income statement is the revenue, the sales minus uh, the cost of goods sold. So that's good. And then if I go back to the income statement, we also have the accounts receivable broken out by sub ledger by customer. So let's open up another report tab to the right, right click and duplicate that tab. And let's just take out look at the sub ledger report by going to the accounting drop down reports and scroll on down to the aged uh, receivable summary report, if we may. And so now this is broken out by our customers. And so now we've got Eric Music. So the total comes out to 38,671.50, which should be on the balance sheet, 38,671.50. In practice, we would track that over here in our open invoices when we're trying to collect on it, most likely, where we have our uh, uh, Eric Music invoice here, awaiting payments, it's in the awaiting payments. We can also see it in customers in the contacts and then we want to check out the inventory making sure that our sub ledger for inventory ties out let's go to the tab to the right right click on it duplicate it again and then go to the reports again and let's do it this way this time and then i'm going to just type in inventory inventory item list let's check that one out and see if it ties out to what it should. It's in 2023, it should be good. 
So now we've got our inventory broken out by item and the cost line 15678 should tie out to the balance sheet 15678 MUI B to the N and we note that the billable items report these two should go away because we did those so updating this report those two are gone no longer have the billable items there so again not a perfect system with these billable items to use them for inventory but it kind of works and again we'll see more of the of the pros and cons of these billable items uh in other ways that we can use them in the future but let's let's do it one more time for the second one so we'll just repeat the process and just to see it now that we have an an idea of what is going on here what is going on a lot of crazy stuff a lot of crazy stuff going on that's what i'm talking about but not as much crazy stuff as uh, this is still crazy but any case this is going into jan jan uh 24 jan 24 and let's imagine this goes to feb 24 for the due date feb 24 invoice reference standard boom boom the billable item pops up now so we're going to say yeah pull that in por favor that's the one we want and so we're just going to add that in boom and so it does it looks beautiful that it has the item and everything but once again that the price pulled in the cost and then it also didn't bring in the account or the tax code so still a little bit a little bit weird you might try to change it here and like reselect it and, and it pulls in the thing i'm a little bit skeptical so that works quite well the thing i'm a little bit skeptical when i did that however is whether or not when i record that it will take it out of uh this report for the billable expenses so notice all i did right there is i said okay i'm just gonna i'm gonna select the same item right here after i already pulled it in and then and then it updated everything beautifully so that might be a way that you can use this properly you have to make sure to do that which you couldn't forget to do that because if you did then it wouldn't record because you there wouldn't be populated fields in the account or the tax code or, or anything uh but but then we just i'll test this one out and just make sure that if you were to do that that it properly uh removes the item from the billable report over here all right let's check it out so that what is this what is this going to do then this is an invoice so it's going to increase the accounts receivable by the uh 8 but i'm also skeptical of this because notice that it also changed the quantity when i did that so I don't think that's I don't think that's the best way to go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna refresh this. I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and not record it, and then do it again. So I'm gonna hit the drop down and then say we want the invoice, and then I'm gonna say this is gonna be going to who did who is this for again? This is gonna go to our music stuff store. So we'll say music stuff store there's our billable item i'll pull in the billable item again and i'll fix it the way we did before so i'm going to say the date is going to be uh 1 jan 24 let's say due date feb uh feb 20 feb 24 let's say and then i'm just going to put down here i'm just going to type it in again gsb just to see the actual uh, price because that's the cost so there's the price 777 and then I'm going to put the sales code here which is 4000 and then the tax populates and then delete the second one so not a perfect kind of pullover but it gives you that kind of indication so now what's it going to do well this is going to increase the accounts receivable by the 815850 the other side uh then going to revenue for the 7770 and then the accounts payable going up by the 38850 and then the inventory going down by the amount that was on there before because that was the cost and then the cost of goods sold going up that's the expense related to the to the purchase of the inventory the net impact and net income sales minus that cost of goods sold the sub ledger for accounts receivable uh, broken out by customer also impacted for music stuff store the customer and the inventory sub ledger will be going down for the items that we sold as well and the uh, billable report should be reduced for having 
for us having pulled over this billable item. So let's approve it and then say, all right, let's check it out. Approved. Uh, there's been an error. GSD only, only nine items available to sell. Okay, I'm going into negative territory on the inventory item. So I'm going to add another inventory item. I'm going to right click on the tab up top and duplicate it. And they're not letting me duplicate it. I'll go to the tab. Uh, let's go to the tab to the right. Right click and duplicate that one. And I'll bring that all the way over here to the left. And let's go into our product. So I'm going to go into the accounting drop down up top or the business drop down. Uh, what was it? Business drop down. That's the one I want. Products and services. And I'm just going to add one more item so that we can record this properly. So what am I on here? We're on a GSB needs one more item. So a GSB is this one. And, uh, we have nine of them. I need one more. So I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to make an adjustment and I'm going to say we want an increase in the quantity as of, I'll just say the beginning of the year, uh, 2023, let's say the beginning of the year and the increase is going to be one, uh, increase quantity by one cost price. I'm going to keep the cost there. That brings the quantity up to 10 and then the adjustment account, the other account I'm going to put it to. I'm going to put it to, I'm going to try to put it to another uh, inventory account, like a sub inventory account uh, so that we tie out to our practice problem here. So let's see if we can, if they allow me to add another one, I'm going to add another account as we go. So I'm going to go to the tab to the right again. Sorry about this. I'm going to duplicate a tab and I'm going to go into our chart of accounts up top accounting and we'll go into our chart of accounts because I have a negative inventory item in my practice problem that I would like to tie out to. So I'm going to try to make another inventory account calling it 1401 to have this amount go to the inventory. So it'll be a negative amount in it. So I'm going to say add 1401 add account and the code is going to be 1401 1401 and the type of account is going to be could I call it inventory or I'd rather say just current asset because I'm not tracking the inventory in this account name. I'm going to call it inventory ADJ account description tax exempt. Okay, let's save it. And then I'm going to go back to this tab and see if it lets me populate it. This is going to be inventory inventory no let me i'm going to go out of it and then back in so i'm going to x out and then go into the new adjustment it's going to be an increase and we're going to say this happens on let's just say january january 1st and quantity increase one the other side going to inventory Okay, I had to refresh the screen, but there it is. It's going to be adjusted to inventory. So it's going to be basically increasing our inventory item, uh, adjusting to the sub ledger, and then I'm putting the other side to inventory because in my worksheet, I have a, actually a negative inventory amount there. So <laughs> hopefully that'll work out. Let's save it and check it out. The reference, I'm going to be ADJ inventory and okay. So post adjustment. So let's see what that does. If I go to the balance sheet then and adjust it. Now we've got the uh, inventory, which is tying out to the sub ledger and this inventory adjustment, which has that negative amount in it so that I have 10 inventory items that I can record with this one now. So I'm going to go back to the first tab. This is all because I messed up uh, the practice problem, of course. Uh, so then I'm going to update this and say, all right, let's refresh the screen on this one, or let's see if I could just approve it now and see if it can indicate that I have 10. There it goes. So now I have the inventory there. All right. So it posted it. So now let's go on to the balance sheet. I'm going to delete this screen and update it. And so now it was able to record 
the inventory. So there's the uh, inventory item. And then if I tab to the right, well, let's check it out. Let's do the whole thing. So we've got the accounts receivable went up. So if I go into the accounts receivable and we scroll on down, we're gonna say, all right, this one was music stuff store uh, for the full amount here. And then if I go back, we're gonna go back and then the other side went to the income statement, updating the income statement into the sales tab. So if I go into the sales tab and scroll down and we're gonna say, okay, there's the invoice on this side, but it's only for the sales price, not including the sales tax. Back to the balance sheet, the sales tax is gonna be recorded in this account and then inventory, the one I wanted to get into, <laughs> inventory is impacted for this account. And then I have that negative inventory item because in my practice problem, I actually recorded a negative inventory, right? So I'm gonna go into the inventory and then check it out. And so if we scroll down, the inventory is going down by uh, the cost, music stuff store, not the sales price scrolling back up. The other side's going into cost of goods sold on the income statement and the cost of goods sold going into it and scrolling down. We've got the music stuff store, uh, this one for the cost, the net impact on the income statement is uh, the, re the sales minus the cost of goods sold. And then on the balance sheet, we also note that the sub ledger for accounts receivable should tie out to this now. So where did I put that? Aged accounts receivable, updating that. We've got uh, Anderson and Music Stuff Store is now added. So if we break it out by who owes us money, these are the four people that owe us the 46,830, which ties out to what's on the balance sheet. That looks good. And then the sub ledger for inventory is gonna tie out to this number, hopefully. So if I go onto the inventory, update that report. Now we have sold all those out. And notice in my practice problem, the problem was, I, I, these are the ones we sold, right? I think I, I went negative. I actually had a negative number on my practice problem and zero correctly is telling me I can't do that. I can't have a negative number. And that's why we had to make the adjustment. So this 10 296 ties out to uh, the 10 296 here. And then in my practice problem, I had a negative, the inventory went negative, which is like impossible to do. And that's why we have that adjustment right there. So there is uh, so there is that one. So that is it. So let's go ahead and run a trial balance and see where we stand. So we're gonna go back up top and I'll go to the tab to the right and then open up a trial balance. This was quite a trial of a, of a practice exercise here with the inventory adjustments and stuff. So let's go to the trial balance and uh, let's run that one. Let's change the range, customizing it, 2023, end of it, update it. There we have it. So if your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. If not, the, the things we changed, a lot of things changed here, right? We changed the accounts receivable. We changed the inventory. We had this inventory adjustment account, which is kind of funny, right? And then we had the sales tax because we dealt with invoices and we had the sales line items and the cost of goods sold line items change. So if you, if you tied out last time and something is off this time, it was probably one of those items. You can then double check it by seeing if it's a date issue, increasing the date range. If something changes, drill down on the change, see where that date range is off, and then change the range on the transaction.